New anti-debate bro video. Let's go. Oh, we're, we're off to a good start. I don't think it's a stretch to state that there is a surp- Oh, we're off to a good start. Debate Bros commentary channels, pretentious video essayists. It's an endless stream of chatter, engagement, and information. Which is good, right? People should be informed. People should discuss how to negotiate and manage power through the blind veil of digital spaces. But is online politics in its current form really doing anything? I'm going to argue no, or at least- Oh dear. All right, well, we're off to a bad start. This is one of those, like, uh, tendencies of the left that is, like, borderline suicidal in that their, their abstainiousness from any form of political relevance because it's not pure enough for them basically guarantees their downfall every time. The end result of this is, like, being a Trotskyist who believes the only real way to agitate the working class is by handing out pamphlets at a town square and, like, every single other way of communicating with people is actually, like, aiding and abetting the system you seek to destroy. It's like, well, sure, dude. I mean, meanwhile, like, fascists are getting, like, huge inroads by taking advantage of every media platform and, and, and medium they can, but, you know, whatever. Online politics offers a That's false me. sense of action and may actively hinder real-world progress. But what specifically makes social media so bad for politics? Let's turn to the progressive left, where you hope there's a greater chance for progress. Chat donations, Patreon support, AdSense, influencers need to weigh the extent to which a potential topic is important enough to give attention to. Political influencers tend to actually settle on a middle ground, a form of politics that appears to be fighting the good fight in an entertaining manner. This middle- That's a good thing? Juxtaposing entertainment and working with both of these together and knowing how to employ them both is how you do media, all media, forever, including literature. Like, the Communist Manifesto was deliberately, like, a dumbed-down and evocative text on the value of class consciousness from a proletarian perspective to incite revolutionary potential in the working class. That was a mix of entertainment and information. So, like, I, I, man, I've heard all this shit before. It's like, uh, did you know that people who cover politics through live streams also have a financial incentive to say stuff that gets them a lot of attention. That's the case for all media, ever. Elite capture often cleverly adapts to resistance by incorporating a tolerable level of it. For example, Amazon can buy up Twitch and host leftist streamers. These creators, reliant on the attention economy of their platforms, are then somewhat limited in advocating for radical action. Oh my god. The, what? It, it's bad to do the streaming thing because if you're doing it, you're doing it on a platform and there's TOS restrictions on the platform. Also, I'm not on Twitch. This digital world of non-things prioritizes information over truth. Whereas truth is stable and durable, information is unstable and evades the ability for us to linger on it, to truly process and reflect. This is evident in how much of online political activity appears to be more about playing than acting. Whereas action breaks with the present and brings something new, play does not interfere with the present. Action involves resistance, whereas play resists real resistance. Did you guys know that live streamers live stream? As opposed to, like, going out there and getting arrested for throwing Molotov cocktails at police uh, headquarters? Did you know that? Why does this happen online? Well, there's a real difference between knowing that the stove can burn you when you touch it versus actually experiencing the burn of the stove. Where the former is theory, the latter prompts immediate action. What? Get your hand away from the stove. Online spaces give us information at the loss of truth. There, we don't experience truth, but rather information. We know of the war in Ukraine, the climate crisis, and police brutality, but many of us don't know it truly. Oh my God. Truth prompts action. This would explain why minorities are far more likely to engage in activism than the melanin deficient. Dude, this video is such a fucking please give me Patreon money, I'm woke. Oh my god. Holy shit, dude. The funny thing is, is that um, I'm pretty sure that when it comes to like participation in radical left movements, it is disproportionately white people. This is the reason why um, black people are so captured by the Democratic Party. Because um, black people are a lot more suspicious of radical whiteies and their big plans to change things up while not actually getting anything done. Oh my god, dude. 
I, man, shit like this bothers me so much. This video is so fucking hypocritical. This, this video is the absolute definition of, like, not only style over substance, but, like, do nothing politics. Because the only thing anyone would reasonably do after watching this video is turn their nose up at people like me or Hassan or Destiny, I suppose, or whatever, and go like, eh, well, hmm, a real leftist would never, I don't know, make videos. Except for this one. Making videos isn't enough. You have to do more than making videos. And then they go back to smoking, like, an ounce of weed every day, <laughs> you know? In terms of, like, disseminating class consciousness or or propaganda or, or any kind of information or news or whatever, live streaming is the most, like, cost-to-person efficient way of doing it, period. Compared to pamphleteering, news channels, newspapers, website management, anything else, nothing hits the same level of, like, disproportional engagement as live streaming, which means it's an effective vehicle for delivering good political messaging. And the point of a live streamer is not to like be the person who goes out there and fucking, um, I don't know, does January 6th but woke or whatever, or whatever this person wants people to be doing politically. The point is to be a media apparatus, to talk to as many people as possible, to share ideas. Like that's a necessary part of the of the infotainment sphere. That's valuable, it's, 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 it's required. Um, I have no idea why we pretend it's not necessary. I think a lot of people on the left just have a very religious attitude towards leftism, where they feel that socialist analysis is like an inevitable and inextricable development in human political uh, growth, and that we would all just naturally arrive at that position, and we need to not focus on distractions like actually sharing those ideas. Have you, you, you ever seen like a lot of lefties who, who act as though like the proletariat potential is right now, right here at this moment ready? You, you've seen stuff like that, right? Like the like they talk about the working class in America as though like they're primed any day now for revolutionary action. I think this is like a, caused by um, just an incredible lack of, of grass touching. The idea that we don't need to spread information anymore, that like everything's already set up. They just don't want to do any work. How can we actually change things? Firstly, we need to move past the idea that this current system of online discourse is constructive. Oh my fucking god, dude. I... What? He should have made this uh, video in the form of pamphlets that he had handed out in the, t in the square, you know? I, I do again, it it's suicidality, is what it is. I it's, it's no different from, like, the Chapo Trap House brand of, like, we have given up, so we have resigned ourselves to the death camps, but we're gonna be smug about it. He's saying left media is captured by elites, probably referring to how most big lefty live streamers are middle class and quite privileged. Comrade Robin Hood, the people capable of disseminating media have at all points in human history been disproportionately privileged, including Karl Marx and Engels. Always. Every time. It's just an unfortunate fact of the world that if you have privilege, you're far more likely to be able to get your message out. And the corollary being, if you can get your message out, even if you're not privileged, that will make you privileged because the, you know, getting your message out is a job. A good example of this, unironically, would be Destiny, who was like a dirt poor Omaha carpet cleaner or something a a until he got into live streaming, which means that you couldn't really ascribe any kind of class privilege to him until after he got into the medium that he now um, disseminates information through, you know? Obviously, Hassan came into this, like, pretty privileged, and I did as well, to be fair. But, like, I, that's th this is the case with, like, all media. Get, like, your average, like, humble proletarian out there onto, like, a news channel, television station, even running a newspaper. And, yeah, eventually they will end up being privileged because that is what success turns into under capitalism. Obviously. Like, to, to reject that is to reject success. It's, it's to cut off your own hand. The spirit of rebellion can exist only in a society where a theoretical equality conceals great factual inequalities, writes Camus. Namely, the true rebellion against current... I also like how n none of these videos will ever acknowledge the fact that the right has had so much success in mobilizing online spaces. Like, literally, almost every major cultural development that gets put forward by the right, by fascists, is done in the form of some kind of online content creator space now. Matt Walsh, Andrew Tate, you know, Jordan Peterson, time and time again, massive gains are made by the right because essentially they took a content creator and they elevated them to a, to, to a, like an, a, a point of international power, you know? Yeah, January 6th, QAnon, there are so many things the right has done and gained that have been done 
through like online spaces. The, the, yeah, they very effectively weaponized the attention economy, and they've been successful in it. So again, it's, 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 it's cutting off your own hand. It's suicidal. Turning oneself into an instrument for a cause is often too fraught with grand statements on human nature, society, and the future to guarantee that such a sacrifice will pay off. I, it's it's literally it's like listening to anime dialogue. Listen to that. Into an instrument for a cause as quo through inaction. The third, turning oneself into an instrument for a cause, is often too fraught with grand statements on human nature, society, and the future to guarantee that such a sacrifice. <sighs> Turning oneself into an instrument for a cause is often fraught with too many grand statements about human nature and society. This does not mean the end of theory or discourse. We need these discussions, pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the will. How lacking in self-awareness do you have to be to advocate something called pessimism of the intellect when you are being as masturbatory as he is in this video? I understand all the words he says, but I don't understand a single sentence he said. Okay, to be clear, the reason it's difficult to understand what he's saying isn't because you're stupid. It's because he's stupid, okay? We've seen this, like, archetype of informational delivery so many times. It's like, this is like a sitcom bit where, like, the dumb one decides that they're smart and starts saying nonsense, but they say it in a way that sounds like it might be smart. It's word salad. Rebel, where his endorsement of trade unionism reflects the sort of concreteness that constructive politics requires. Far from being a form of romanticism, rebellion takes the part of true realism. What does it mean? Dude, yeah, this is literally like uh, intellectual gooning, okay? This isn't just intellectual masturbation. This this guy's got a fucking brain goon cave, okay? This guy this guy has like a whole folder he keeps with him. Like, a, uh, they opens up and it's like all the philosophers he pretends to read. And he's like, ooh, I'm, I'm good. And it's, it's, it's just like for how smart he is, you know? Wait, this person has fucking more subs than I do? Wait, I thought I was talking down to like a smaller creator. What the fuck? He's been making vids for over eight years. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm way less charitable to this guy now. I didn't even see the sub count. I just assumed this was a small channel. You've literally made this your fucking career and you're good. Yeah, I'm literally, I'm punching up on sub count. Okay, whatever.